Hey everyone, welcome back to Robert's Rental Project. In today's video, I'll be showing you guys how I made another one of our front yard garden beds here in front of the garage with a small retaining wall, an edge finish, landscape fabric with mulch, a small bird bath slash fountain, and some nice plants. So let's jump right to it. I'm gonna start off with leveling this area that I want to be the garden bed because there is a mound of soil here and I'll just make sure that everything is level so that our water isn't running off and causing other problems. And where I'll want to build the little retaining wall here to hold back all this soil, I'll be creating a small trench in order that our pavers can properly sit down and not move and create a proper base for our retaining wall. These are the mini flagstones slash pavers that I'm using here and I'll have them linked in the description below and I got them at Lowe's here. They're cement pavers and they look really nice. I thought they were a bit more modern and they'll fit right in. They're easy to move and easy to place and you're just gonna start off with laying them down wherever you want them to be in order to see visually at least in my case, it makes it much easier to visually see how you want your project to end up. And we're going to start a little curve here and then follow the pavers down the small sidewalk. This beginning row I made almost level to the ground so that soil isn't popping up. And the wall will be completely level, but the sidewalk does slope slightly inward and down because of time and for water drainage. But as we start gluing our pavers down, you want to make sure that you dust them to ensure that no maladhesion is happening between the rock surface and your other pavers, that the glue is bonding them securely together. They do suggest drying times in between the pavers and between your sections but I just did it all in one and it worked out so if you're impatient like me you could also do that. I'm using a staggering method here and this will ensure that our wall is secure and won't go anywhere as well as that it slopes inward slightly in order to retain our soil securely and in place because if you have the slope slightly forward then you have a higher chance of the wall collapsing so make sure that you slope your wall inward and that you stagger it to make sure that it will last the longest it can so after that I started laying my edging down I just made a little trench around where I wanted the area you could use a garden hose to map out that shape and then spray it and then dig. And that just helps you visualize it more clearly and just make the process even smoother. I put the edging level to the ground, which was a mistake. So make sure that you leave at least an inch to two and you aren't having mulch atop your soil or soil atop your mulch. Now, as we lay our landscape fabric, I would suggest that you guys do two to three layers at least for proper weed prevention because I did one here and it did not work. We had a bunch of weeds growing through them and it's a pain so two to three is I think better for any application of landscape fabric. I put our half inch poly tube here and I just teed it off our main section.
and then I added one little drip system here for a bigger bugambilia that will go here and trail up this wall. So make sure that you put your poly tube atop your landscape fabric and not beneath it like in the tree ring video. This is the birdbath slash fountain that I got at Lowe's which will be in the description. And the cement looks really nice so I wanted it to be a good combination with the black mulch and our garden bed section. So we'll clear a little section of mulch for our square paper here, which will be the base that holds up our fountain, which I recommend you do because if you have it on mulch, it'll probably lean to the sides and move around much more than if it's securely standing on something more solid. So now that our square paper is level, I'll just backfill it with mulch. And then I just place our fountain atop it. If you are using a cement fountain like this one, bird bath, I recommend that you seal the inside of it because I did have leaks and a couple of cracks. So use some sealer if you don't want your water leaking. And each time that I add a new section of drip to our system, I make sure to walk around the system and ensure that it's properly working so that we don't have any leaks. This is the section all mulched up with the wall and the bird bath and it looks much, much nicer than it was in the beginning. So even if you do this and don't plant or add drip, it's still a lot better than just plain old dirt. birds and pollinators will surely love this fountain. And now at Lowe's we'll be shopping for some perennials today. And these are easier than planting annuals because they're more cost effective and you don't have to plant them every year. The foliage is a bit more rough looking than annuals I would say as well as the flowers but as plants are more and more expensive I would suggest doing perennials if you don't have the bigger budget for annuals. And each time that I pick out plants here I make sure to always stagger the displays so that I create less work for the employees. And as I shop here I lay out the plants and make sure that I like how they look next to each other because the last thing you want is you're ready to plant and then they don't look good. So I recommend you do that when you're shopping around at the garden section.
So really fast, we'll connect our holes here. I start with some thread tape that I loop four to five times around our hose bib, ensuring that we are preventing leaks in our system because I have found that without thread tape, I do start having a lot of leaks, which are costly and very unwanted when you're watering. Just like in our drip system, I put a filter here to make sure that we don't have any gunk in our hose and that our hoses will last longer. And to that filter, I'll connect our female quick connect which is attached to our male quick connect and then our hose and then on the other side of our hose i'll wrap our thread tape around again and connect another quick connect set for our nozzle and these quick connects have been super useful when changing nozzles and connecting machines like pressure washers or other connections that you need to make around the garden And now time for our flag. Now time for the fun part, planting. So with our planting, I use a little garden rake, a trowel, and scissors to cut the fabric that's beneath the mulch, as well as gloves. So in our planting setup here, I'm using a kneeling pad when planting for long periods of time. It does get very strenuous on your knees and on your back. So we'll start by placing our plant roughly where we want it and then moving the mulch aside. cutting a X shape into our landscape fabric, making four triangles that we can easily push under and back beneath the rest of our fabric, making a opening where we can dig and plant our new plants. And I found it a lot easier to use a bucket in which to place the soil that we dig out from our hole to keep our mulch clean and have a tidier system. And with the soil, I'll use to backfill our plantings and with leftover to just toss in the compost.
now that our hole is at an adequate depth, I add a bit of compost as well as our fertilizer. top dress with more compost and a little bit of native soil. Finally tightening it up with our mulch and then we repeat. I felt that I needed a bit more fertilizer, so I just moved the mulch aside, added our fertilizer, covered it up, so with a good heavy watering, we'll ensure that the fertilizer reaches the root ball of our plants. And this little whole stake will keep our plant safe and happy. And now, our drip system. I'm using a kneeling pad, a little hand rake, our quarter inch black poly tube, connectors a drip puncher and our drip cutters our garden staple and lastly our emitters We'll start by finding our half inch poly tube, which we laid beneath our mulch. We'll start by finding our half inch poly tube that we laid beneath our mulch, and we're clearing a little space where we can give water to each plant. I'll start by measuring the length of the half inch poly to the base of the plant. Then connecting our quarter inch straight connector. And then 
attaching our emitter, which will give half a gallon per hour to each plant. The barbed side faces our half inch polytubing. And then we follow it off with the rest of our quarter inch poly. Now we see where we want our connection to be made. Then we just punch our hole into our half inch poly. Make sure that we hear a click sound, ensuring that our connection is successful. We just tack it down and we're done. And now this plant is stripped. Lastly, we top it off with our mulch, and now we just repeat. Now that we're all done with our connections, make sure to test your drip system out, ensuring that all your connections are working and without leaks.
a good thing we check our system because this connection does have a leak. We'll be using a rubber stopper here to plug up our leak. You're going to want to punch a new hole and then move your quarter inch section to that new hole so then we can cover up the leaking hole with the girthier part of a rubber stopper. Now it's working and back to business. And there you have it. A new garden bed with lavender, Mexican heather, a bird bath fountain, all dripped and mulched. Thank you for watching, please leave a like, subscribe, comment, and hit the notification button, and I'll see you in the next one.